good morning. Uh, my name is Dele Ayimibo, and we are starting another session this morning on um, handling the five P's of export business challenges. Handling the five P's of export business challenges. We started with product, then we discussed pricing, then we discussed uh, purchasers. Yesterday evening we discussed paperwork, and this morning we are going to be discussing payment, and that will be the last in this series. And basically what we are looking at is, export business have challenges, how do we fix those challenges? And that's why this has been titled, Handling the five P's of export business challenges. Handling the five P's of export business challenges. So today we'll be looking at payment. The purpose of business is to solve problem and thereby create value. Why the goal of the business is to make profit. Therefore, before um, this therefore makes the last factor very critical to the success of any business being profitable. The payment factor in this series focuses on how to source for funding from banks and how to ensure that payment is made after shipment. So when we talk about payment, as far as under the five p of export business is concerned, we are looking at the issue of payment. Number one, from the perspective of getting funding to pay for raw materials, and number two, getting um, payment from the buyer after the shipment has been made. Number one, getting funding to pay for raw material. Number two, getting payment from the buyer after the shipment has been made. Let me welcome Olua Shola Bolatito, Ashegu Olu Folahan, Peter Omeike, Wale Adegoyega Uche Chukwe Meka. Thank you very much for joining. The business plan of a new exporter should answer the following question. Remember what we've been doing. If you are, if you have missed the other series, in this series we have about five uh, videos, and this is the last one. Um, in this series, what we've done is to be able to answer those. I mean, provide solution to those challenges by posing seven different questions and attempting to answer them by posing seven different questions and attempt to answer them. And here are the questions. We have the question of the what, the why, the where, the which, the who, and then the how. The what, the where, the when, the who, the why, the which, and the how. Now the first question is, what are the payment methods in a typical export transaction? What are the payment methods in a typical export transaction? The second question is, where is the place of valid export contracts in export financing? Where is the place of valid export contracts in export financing? By the way, we're going to be discussing also very soon what I call the A to Z of export business financing. What I call the A to Z of export business financing. And when I talk about A to Z of export business financing, we're not just talking about raising funds, we're also talking about you putting your money in export business. You're going to be funding an export transaction. What are the things you look out for? Okay, so the question, second question, where is the place of valid contract? Number three, when is ordinary letter of credit not a reliable payment security? When is ordinary letter of credit not a reliable payment security? And number four, when is, um, who are those that are eligible to assess export finance products. Who are those that are eligible to assess export finance products? Then number five, why are the payment methods not, at, why are some payment methods not attractive to bank? Why are some payment methods not attractive to bank? And how can we make it attractive? Then number six, which instrument can give bank comfort when you are financing local supply? Which kind of instrument can give a bank so comfort when financing the local supply. And lastly, how can an exporter mitigate the risk of non-payment? How can an exporter mitigate the risk of non-payment? Uche Chukwemeka, thank you for joining. Alex John, thank you for joining. Ubarak Macro, thank you for joining. And Raf Abiodu, thank you very much for joining this morning. Let's answer the first question. Remember, we are trying to fix the problem of payment. 
and we split that problem into two. The first part of the problem is getting payment from buyers abroad. The second one is raising money from bank to pay for the goods or to pay for raw materials. Getting money from bank to pay for the goods or to pay for raw materials. The first question says, what are the payment methods available in export trade? What are the payment methods available in export trade? Now, generally, even though some other people have added some to it, which, uh, which are being used also, but generally we have about four of them. We have what is called open account, which some people also call cash against document. We have what is called bill for collection. We have what is called letter of credit. And we have what they call advanced payment. Recently, a new one was added, and that one was called bank payment obligation. But in Nigeria, we tend to use letter of credit, bill for collection, open account, and advanced payment. So that's the one I'll be talking about, uh, our focus on right now. For open account, open account is also called the cash against document. Open account basically is a situation where after I have shipped the goods to the buyer, the document that the buyer needs to clear the goods, I send it to him directly. And after certain days, he fed payment to me. I ship my goods to the buyer. The document required for the buyer to clear the goods in his country, I send it to him via courier. And then after 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, he pays me. Typically when he sees the goods, which can be about 60 days or 30 days. That is called open account. Open account. Now, that is very risky. Very, very risky. But I tell you, 80% of trade in the world are done on that term. So if it's risky and 80% of trade in the world are done on that term, what that simply tells you is that all you need to do is to answer the question, what are the people doing it in the world? What are they doing differently that is making them to accept those terms? And then you fix it. Most of the shipment we do also are open account and we get paid. So I'll be talking about that in, in, in some of the future conversation on how to mitigate the risk around open account. But that's not our focus today. Our focus today is just to talking about the payment issue. Then we have the bill for collection. Bill for collection is another payment method and it involves the transmission of documents through both buyers and sellers bank to the buyer. When they transmit the document, they expect payment to come. So in bill for collection, the transmission of document and collection of payment is entrusted into the hand of the buyer's bank. The transmission of document and the collection of payment is entrusted into the hands of the buyer's bank. The transmission of document and the collection of payment is entrusted in the hand of the buyer's bank. That is bill for collection. That means I send my document around and I expect payment to come afterwards. But instead of sending the document directly, as in the case of open account, this time around, I send a document through my bank. I send the document through my bank. From my bank, it goes to the buyer's bank, and from the buyer's bank, released to the buyer. The buyer is expected to pay immediately or pay at a later date, depending on the agreement we have. Is either to pay immediately or to pay at a later date. Now, bill for collection. Then we have the third one we mentioned. We call it letter of credit. Letter of credit is an undertaking of the buyer's bank, giving to you the exporter, giving assurance of payment when the shipment has been made and documents are presented that conform to the terms and condition of the letter of credit. Let me break that down. In a letter of credit transaction. The buyer's bank gives the seller a guarantee for payment. That guarantee document is called letter of credit. In a letter of credit transaction, the buyer's bank, that's the importer abroad, the bank of that importer, maybe Citibank in London, gives you, the exporter, a guarantee in Nigeria. Go ahead and ship these goods. However, you must meet condition A, B, C, D, E. And those conditions must be evidence on the shipping document you are sending to us. When we release, receive that shipping document, within five banking days, we will get back to you to let you know if we are paying or we have issue with your document. Adesheu Adewale, thank you very much for joining. Olawale Jeremiah, thank you very much for joining. Osita Aniemena, thank you very much for joining. Unwa Koishkeshiku, thank you very much for joining. Dimeji Bakari, 
Thank you very much. And then Badamosi Tauri, thank you very much for joining. So we've talked about open account. We've talked about bill for collection. We've talked about letter of credit. Now we are discussing advance payment. You know what happened in advance payment? As soon as the good is ready for shipment, or even before I start production, the buyer transfer money to me, effect payment. And I tell you, this happened in Nigeria. This is happening in Nigeria. This is, even though some people have messed up that opportunity, but I can assure you there are companies in Nigeria, indigenous companies in Nigeria, that get payment ahead. I know of a company that my one of my former colleagues was telling me that, look, the, the company, he now works with the company, that the company will not even ship if you don't pay. They will receive your money before they load your container and ship to you. They produce finished product. So companies in Nigeria are getting advanced payment, no doubt about it. It's all about the value you are creating. If you are creating so much value and the buyer find it difficult to do without your product, such that if your product is not available in his store, the people will be on his case asking for it. He will give you payment in advance. Benjamin Okon, thank you very much for joining. So I've answered the first question. What are the payment methods? Question two. Question two. Question two is, where is the place of a valid contract? Where is the place of a valid contract in export financing? If you want a bank to finance your export transaction, you must have a valid contract. Why do you need a valid contract? This is because the contract forms the premise for the loan. It's the premise for the loan. If the bank is going to even start processing the loan, the basis for processing that facility is the contract. Number two, it helps the bank to monitor the planning of the shipment and the shipping line. It helps the banker to know when, when the preparation of the pro and production and sourcing for shipment should commence. They, if they know this is the quantity you should ship within this also period, they have an idea of when you should start processing, when you should start procurement, when you should start the whole process. It shows the banker where and when and who and how payment will be made. It informs the financier that they agree, they agree price and then also help the banker to know how best to package the loan for facility. Through contract, the bank also is able to know the liabilities and responsibilities. Through contract, the bank is able to know the liabilities and responsibilities. What are the liabilities of the bank? What are the responsibilities of the exporters? And then it helps the banker to know to envisage the likely challenges, the likely challenges that will be faced in that transaction. If it's an agreed product, what are the challenges? The contract tells us if it's a solid minerals, what are the challenges? The contract tells us if it's finished product, what are the challenges? When I know the product, I'm able to envisage the kind of challenge to face. Number three. When is an ordinary letter of credit not a secure payment method? Letter of credit is a guarantee from the exporter, importer's bank, given to the exporter, giving assurance of payment. But sometimes that guarantee does not hold water. A good example happened in Nigeria recently when we went into recession. When we went into recession, the Nigerian bank had the Naira, but they could not have the dollar to pay. Nigeria Bank have the Naira, but they don't have the dollar to pay. When a country is going through economic recession or economic problems, or is going through a political problem, the bank in that country most likely will also be facing a challenge that will hinder them from being able to pay. So when there is a sovereign risk in the country, either due to political issue or economic issue, that could make a letter of credit become useless. And that is what led to the concept of confirmed letter of credit, in which case another bank in another country give an additional undertaking. So I'm shipping to China. So I'm shipping to Venezuela. Venezuela is having issue economic crisis. But Citibank in London give me undertaking that if I ship to Venezuela, they will pay me. So what that means is that I'm not going to be looking at any bank in Venezuela to pay. I'm going to be looking at a bank in London, Citibank, to pay me. And that concept is called the confirmed letter of credit. So when there is a sovereign risk in a country, the guarantee given by you by a bank in that country might just become useless 
or make it become impossible for them to be able to pay. Then the next question is, who are those eligible to assess finance? Now, I'll be talking a lot about finance very soon. Like I said, the next series will be starting later this evening will be around finance, actually. And that will be a very long series. And we're going to be discussing finance. And I'll be talking about you financing, using your money to finance an export or sourcing for financing from a bank. What are the things you'll be looking for? What are you should you be working on to be able to ensure you're able to present a bankable financing request or you're not just able to present a bankable financing request, you're also able to use your money to finance an export transaction and ask the right question, even, uh, even though you're working in an organization. Not all exporters are eligible to financing. So who are those eligible to financing? Before an exporter can be considered to be eligible for export financing, the exporter will need to provide the following information, which uh, includes documentary evidence of his history of previous shipment, evidence by bill of lading, the frequency of shipment, evidence by bill of lading, the contract, the, the, the payment method, which will be seen on his contract, the term of payment, which will be seen on his contract. It needs to show all the pro pro production or procurement strategy and how it's going to mitigate the risk. That should be on his proposal or plan. Availability of the product, that should be on his business plan. A product, um, destination of the product, that should be on the contract. The cycle of his transaction, that should also be on his history. The history of his, uh, of his previous shipment. The, 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 country, the document is providing the bank will show the cycle. The last shipment he did, when he signed the contract, when the payment comes in. The account statement and the contract he signed give us an indication of the cycle of that transaction. Then it, it also, uh, the last one is the buyer's history of payment. You have shipped to this buyer, have you shipped him before? Yes. How often does he pay? How frequently does he pay when shipment is made to him? The frequency, sorry, the, the history of payment of the buyers. If you are able to present documentary evidence that show all this to a bank, then you increase your chance. You increase your chance of getting the facility from the bank. Henry Bechina, thank you very much for joining. The next is the fifth question, which says, why are some payment methods not attractive to banks and is there a way out when i discuss the other time i talk about open account and i talk about bill for collection open account and bill for collection expose you unduly to the risk of non-payment they are therefore not attractive to banks however there are instruments like guarantees there are instruments like standby letter of credit that can be used to protect the bank to protect you and secure that payment when some buyer says they don't want to give letter of credit, not because they don't want to guarantee your payment. The reason why they're not giving is because they avoid the, they're avoiding the discrepancy issues. You know, yesterday night, we're discussing document, discrepancy on document, delay caused by discrepancy, and demorage. That is exactly what buyers are trying to avoid. If they use an LC and there's a discrepancy, that will reduce the chance of getting paid on time. Sorry, of getting the document on time. That will reduce the chance of getting the document on time and claiming the good on time. So they want open account or bill for collection so as to avoid discrepancy. But if you want them to guarantee at the back, they don't have any issue with that. Because they will give you a guarantee or standby letter of credit, something to give you assurance that payment will be made. But you are still going to do open account or bill for collection. That means even though open account and bill for collection are not secured, I now have at the back of the transaction a secure payment instrument. A secure payment instrument. By the way, I'm working on a book, and the book is called Demand Guarantee Made Easy, and then Standby Letter of Credit Made Easy. It's currently with the publisher, but before the end of the match, the book should be out, and I'll be introducing it also on this platform. Demand Guarantee Made Easy, and then Standby Letter of Credit Made Easy. Those two books will be coming out together sometimes in the month of March. And those are the instruments you can use to protect yourself against this uh, bill for collection issue and uh, open account issue. Then second to the last question is, which instrument can give bank a comfort when financing local supply? In countries like Nigeria, where most exportable items are hard or soft commodities, 
in an environment that is likely unstructured, banks need comfort in order to be able to get involved in pre-export financing. This therefore means that any exporter that wants bank to finance its procurement of commodity from a local supplier must be ready to provide an advance payment guarantee if he needs to give fund ahead to the supplier or to provide a payment guarantee if the supplier is willing to deliver the goods but need comfort that he will get his payment afterwards. Advance payment guarantee or advance payment standby or a payment guarantee or commercial standby are instruments that can be used to source for commodity locally. If your supplier have money to buy the goods and deliver but need comfort, then you give him a commercial standby or payment guarantee. If your supplier does not have money, you need to raise money from the bank to give him. But you need to be sure he will not run away with the money, he will be able to deliver. Then you can use advanced payment standby or advanced payment guarantee. Advanced payment standby or advanced payment guarantee. Advanced payment standby or advanced payment guarantee. The last question. Uh, how can an exporter mitigate the risk of non-payment? This is not this is a major risk for all 